going on, everybody? It's me, Lewis Beck. Welcome back to Hybrid Home Studio, 343 TV. Um, uh, this week, we're going to be talking about how to make bass lines on multiple synths at once. All right? So, essentially, uh, one of the kind of best techniques, that best kept secrets, right, that is used in uh, a lot of electronic music production is taking a, a bass line, right, and then actually expressing it or voicing it or articulating it, however you want to put it, right, across multiple synths. So first, what we're going to do is is we're going to actually write a bass line on one synth. Now, you have to forgive me as I'm obsessively adjusting my hat because everything that I do into the camera screen is backwards, so I'm very confused about what direction I'm going. Anyway, um, we're just going to jump right into it, right? So uh, real quick. For those of you who are new, right, who are first timers, welcome to 343 TV. We This is the online educational branch of the music school based in Berlin and New York City called 343 Labs. We teach everything, right? So, um, you know, if you're looking to learn some uh, up your skills, then please, please, please go to our website, 343labs.com and check us out. And if you dig the content, please subscribe. All right, I'm just going to get right into it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to just create a uh, baseline using one of the, you know, uh, stock synths in, uh, in Ableton. And by the way, but somehow you haven't heard, right? Ableton just announced they're coming out with Lab 11. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, and so I'm going to be working in kind of like a, a techno style today uh, or, you know, just dance four on the floor dance format. So I'm going to put on a quick kick drum and this night, this isn't necessarily going to be the kick that I'm going to use, but in terms of just composition, this will help me to quickly be able to create a baseline that I like. And so when you're using multiple baseline, multiple synths to create a single baseline, right? A lot of the times what you're going to want to do is, is you're going to want to create a kind of some sort of, you know, base structure that is um, a little bit busier, right? So you don't really want to do like a sustained baseline between multiple synths. You want stuff where there's like quick syncopation and such things that is going to make it really interesting to hear different tones, right? And so first, let's just go for making some kind of standard bass groove. So I'm not going to keep them all on the same note, but what I like to do, especially when I'm like writing anything that is based in rhythm is I like to first, um, excuse me. I like to first just play in the rhythm that I'm going to use. And then what I do is, is I actually start expressing the uh, melody and the melodic differences in the actual MIDI clip itself. Cool. So that 
yeah, so I dig that. That's grooving. And what I'm going to do is, is just, I've really lately been into like down tempo stuff. So I'm just going to take the tempo down. So I dig that. So now what I'm going to do is, and again, this is hybrid home studio, right? So what, uh, what we, what I mainly focus on in this show is how to combine like analog synths and external hardware with things that, um, you know, with, with processes in the box. And so one of the number one things that I always do, right, is that the way that I use my synths nine times out of 10 is that what I do is I create an external instrument track on a blank MIDI track, right? And then I take the MIDI from, you know, the baseline that I just wrote, and I'm gonna drag it onto this external instrument track. Now, I'm gonna name this one Moog. Because what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take this MIDI and I'm going to send it out to my Moog, right? And so I have my Moog coming in on port 3 on channel 6. I have that memorized because I do it basically every day, right? And I have it coming in on input 6 as well. So what I'm then going to do is I'm going to duplicate the channel. And then I'm going to write profit. And so this one, right, is going to go to my profit synth. I'm going to bring the audio in on uh, channel 8, I believe. And then I'm also, for the last one, going to write, going to make it one on my mini log. And so this one goes here. So now... If I solo each of these channels, let's start with the mini logs. I just turned it on. All right, so it's sending to my mini log, and it obviously sounds super terrible at the moment. Uh, so also, I'm gonna, I don't need two layers of this loop. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna write, lift everything up. That's not the sound that I'm going to use, right? But you can, as you can hear, it's coming from a mini lock now, right? All right, so let me, um, I want to try something today because I hate that you guys can't see what I'm doing on this synth. I want to show you some sound design stuff. What's really important, right, is that you know your synth that you're working with, okay? So one of the things that I know about my mini log is that, or about the mini log in general, is that the resonance really thins out the bass line a lot. So what I'm going to do is first is I'm going to make sure that the resonance is set in the right place. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my uh, filter envelope depth. And then I'm going to adjust the actual filter envelope itself. So I'm working hard to try to get some extra cameras going forward so you guys can always see what I'm doing. But I hope that was at least a little bit helpful.
Anyway, so this is the first synth. This is the first sound that I'm going to use, right? So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to mute this. And next I'm going to go over to my Prophet and I'm going to uh, try to dial in a kind of cool sound on my Prophet. Let's see, but we are getting no sound on the Prophet, so let's figure out why. Oh, well, because it's not turned up in volume. All right, let me see. All right. Let's try this again. Wait, hold on a second. Oh, because I'm not monitoring it. That's uh, that would be why. No. What is happening? Okay, hold on a second. Alright, so I'm trying to figure out troubleshoot wise for a second. Why am I getting no audio from my profit? That's never cool. Let's try something for a sec. That's slightly concerning. Okay, anyway, so I'm going to ignore the profit for a second. Um, let's go to the Moog. I'm also getting no signal. Sorry, this is super weird. Why am I getting signal on here? Sorry, audio from... Oh, did I not set to audio? No, it should be... This is super weird. I don't know why this is doing this. Have it on, let's try it on in. Let's do this for a second. So sometimes you gotta troubleshoot a little bit. I'm gonna go into my MIDI. My in and out are all set. So that's really weird. Because I can see. My output is being is working. So let's just try some. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my sense on and off. Right? Gotta troubleshoot sometimes.
Yeah, I'll check my I.O. settings. I mean, that, that shouldn't really be an issue. That's the weird thing. Let's see. I see it's configured, so my universal... Okay, let's see. Input configuration. No, we're all... See, I should have the ability to monitor mono. That's super weird. It's working literally five minutes ago. Um, especially because it's working with the mini log, but not with the other ones. That is really bizarre. Honestly, what I'm just gonna do is, is I'm gonna try to create a. I'm just gonna some. I'm gonna sometimes what can happen is, you just need to create a new track. So I'm gonna create a new track again. I'm gonna take this external MIDI instrument, and I'm gonna drag this MIDI onto here. Mute this. And let's try to do this from scratch again. So I'm sending it to my profit. Getting audio in from channel eight. And there you go. Sometimes it's just as simple as you need to create another channel. So, you know, sometimes Ableton can, can be a douche. So can logic. It just depends on what you're doing. Anyway, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my profit, right? And I'm going to program in a cool bass sound on the profit. So that's, that's cheating because that's a preset that I made, which I love. It always sounds nice. So I'm just going to play with it on the preamp real quick to get it tighter. So what I have now is I have this and I have this. that one and I have this one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust the cut off a little bit and maybe turn up the release a little bit So I like both of these tones. And now I'm going to do is I'm going to go on to my profit, right? And I am also going to program in a bass sound. <laughs> no, there's no cheating in Synth Paul. I like that TW Industries. <laughs> All right, so Let's see. Happening again. Okay, so let's see if at least I'm getting audio from my phone. Oh, wow. Well, sometimes you do dumb shit. Uh, I didn't turn on the preamp <laughs> that the Moog is coming through, so that's why I was getting no signal. Okay, great. Um, I could have sworn I turned everything on. Oh, well. Let's try that again. So you can be wowed by the awesomeness of my Voyager.
So now what I have is, is these three bass lines, right? Or rather. So I have these three bass sounds now, right? So this is my Moog. It's my Prophet. And then I have my mini log. So basically what I'm now going to do is, is I'm going to separate this bass line out over these three synths. So I have my source code, so to speak, right here, right? So if I mess some things up. And so a good way to think about this, right, is to think like, what is what are the main rhythmic inflection points? What are the main downbeats and upbeats, right? The main moments of syncopation. And which synth should I use to kind of dictate the like main downbeats, right? So what I'm thinking is I'm probably gonna use the Moog. Or actually what I'm thinking is, is whichever one sounds best when it goes up high to the boom. I kind of like that, that profit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this, this bass line Excuse me. I'm going to mute this note. I'm going to go into the. I'm going to go into the Moog. And I'm also going to mute this second note. Okay. What? <sighs> Ableton, you're really testing me today, man. There we go. I'm going to mute that one. And I'm thinking that my downbeat might be the mini log sound. So I'm also going to go in here into the profit and mute that one and mute the Moog sound. So now what I'm going to have is the conversation between these three. So I'm going to have the profit go up. So hit this note. I'm gonna have the Moog hit this third one. Moog has a third one, and the first note is gonna be the mini log. So let's just hear what that first three sounds like. All right. That sounds pretty nice already. So what I'm thinking is now, is I'm gonna have the mini log do this note so i'll mute that fourth note the profit and the and the oh excuse me there's so many crazy things happening right now i don't know why ableton is reacting this way so let's see so now what I'm going to have, right, is the Moog will be silenced in the fourth note. The Prophet will be silenced in the fourth note. Great. So I'm going to put the mini log on top just for organizational purposes to make things a little bit easier. So now let's hear this. So you can see we have one, two, three, four, right? None of the notes are overlapping. And I'm hearing immediately that I'm actually not liking that decision I just made. Boom, 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 boom. So I want it to be maybe a little bit rounder, a little bit rounder, chubbier, tighter on that one. So I think I'm going to choose the, one of the keys with this technique is to not really ever have one bass line play two notes in a row. So I'm going to have the prophet play this fourth note. I'm going to see what that sounds like, and I'm going to mute the mini log. So notice, this process is a little bit experimental. Nice. Okay. So now I'm thinking I'm going to have the mini log do the fifth note, right? I like that. So I'll make the Moog silence there, and the Prophet silence 
there. So let's hear it now. Yeah. I like that. So again, we have a conversation now going on between the mini log, the Moog, and the Prophet. So now I just got to figure out what the next note to come is. I'm thinking I'm going to have to be the, the Moog. Because that's the best kind of attack. A round robin sequence. I don't fully know what that means, TW Industries, but I guess what, you know, if you're saying like it's a conversation between all of them, then yeah, in a sense. Yeah, round robin, the best of all of them. So I think that this, the Moog is the best transient definition. So I'm going to have that one land on the kick, which might seem a little counterintuitive, but I'm going to. So I'll turn the profit one off. Yeah, that's nice. I'm going to go on the mini log. Great. So let's hear this now. Yeah. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's try to have the mini log do that one. I think that that seems like a nice, a nice one for the mini log to do. So now let's go into the Moog. Mute that note, profit. Mute that note. It's cool, but I'm wondering what it would sound like if I had the prophet do that last note. I like that. Yeah, I think I prefer that. And so now what I'm going to do is is I'm gonna copy that over for all of these, except I have this double here, right? This little double moment. So I'm simply gonna look at the start of the sequence right over here from the Moog, and I can see that I'm only playing the third note and the one, two, three, four, five, sixth note. So I'll mute those, because I wanna create consistency here, right? And then I'll come over to my mini log. I'm playing the one and the five. One, two, three, four, five, five, great. And then I'll come over here to my, oh, that's none of them. Come over to my profit and I'll mute all the ones that aren't playing. So two, four, no final note. So let's see if that works. Okay. That's cool. Um, I guess you could say it's kind of that, except I'm doing it across multiple synths, but I think that's like a good way to look at, you know, what it is. Um, so I think maybe I'm going to have the Moog do this double note on the second time around, see what that sounds like. Or rather do this, I guess, this down note. Or maybe let's have the mini log do it. I think that could actually be really cool. All right, so let's figure out what notes are. I think there might be some weird overlap here. Okay, so 533. Three. I'm going to profit. Okay, so I'm thinking that. And then put the mini log. Do that. Okay, let's try that. Yeah. What is the command to show both arrangement and clip at the same time? Oh, that's just you know, shift tab if you want to open it up. 
and then shift tab to pull over to here. Um, also, yeah, they're both, yeah, to answer your question, Regine, they're both hardware sense. So you can see the Moog is here, the Profit is, is up there. Um, all right. So now what I'm going to do is, is like, I like the way that this kind of, I'll call this like, you know, this little bass juggle is going on, right? And so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to refine the synth parameters to make them like actually really work together. Now, one thing that I've learned or at least found over uh, many years of doing this is that it's a really bad idea to make these adjustments um, on the external MIDI track. One of the reasons is if you're not careful, you can accidentally adjust the parameters of one synth from another synth and they won't correspond in terms of like their MIDI channel. Um, of like, you know, the cutoff on one thing might adjust like the detune knob on the other one. So you don't really want to do that. So what I do is, is I now create three new tracks and I'm going to name one of them mini log the other one profit and this last one moog and then I'll just you know bring them in correspondingly so I know the mini log is coming in on channel 9 profit is coming in on channel what channel are you coming on channel 8 and the Moog is coming in on channel six. Um, I'm not gonna lie, they're both really expensive synths. Um, so, you know, you can buy them on like Sweetwater or Guitar Center or on Reverb.com, but they're physical pieces of hardware. They don't only go with Ableton. They're like standalone synthesizers. So I could plug it into a speaker and I could just play it like that. Um, so it's called it's an analog synthesizer. What all those are, Regine. Um, okay. Anyway, so now I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna adjust the mini lock ones. I think that's the weakest of the three tones. And like I like that it has this little bit of like a dronier less defined transient on the mini log but i kind of want to give it a little bit more like resonance and sharpness um to make it match with the other three other two I did was I adjusted the attack on the uh, envelope depth to give it that wow to like so it goes like this now right, so it has a little bit more of a wow to the start of it right I'm gonna roll the attack back just a tad on the amplitude envelope as well and I love this sound from the Moog but it's just a little bit yeah it's exactly what it is right you kind of play it like one poly and what, what this kind of like is the alternative to is um using you know velocity to trigger your the envelope depth so that's like the number one thing that i love doing on bass lines right which I'll, I'll show you in a sec what i mean by that right where if like so if you go into analog real quick i'm, I'm sure you know what this means tw industries but maybe there's some other people that aren't quite familiar um 
So what you can do is, is you can come here to your envelope to velocity. And what this basically means is, is that the envelope, once you start turning it positively, will now open more or less according to how much the velocity is actually set to. So right now, right? You can hear though, if I turn this. So here, actually, hold on, let me also turn off velocity up there, okay. Let's really do this. Let's really go for it. There you go. Right, so this is how you can actually make, you can use the velocity to either open or close the um, filter envelope depth a little bit more. Um, but so basically I, I use this as like a sort of like alternative, not as an alternative, but like a different way to do it or an even more advanced way to do it because what I can do is I can also, you know, use different tones. So you could also like, like accomplish this by just using a sequencer, you know, a hardware sequencer. But I mean, if you don't have that, then you don't have the luxury, you know? So, so check it out. Let's, so let's check this out now. Now, one really esoteric little thing is that, like, I just adjusted the preamp setting on my uh, Universal Audio 710 uh, Twinfinity that the uh, Moog is, I'm sorry, that the Mini Log is coming through. It has a balance between transistor and tube uh, in terms of, like, what it's using to actually amplify it. And so I'm turning it a little bit more towards tube, so that's a little bit less mid-forward and it sits back a bit more, right? So um, for those of you that are interested at all in, like, preamps and stuff like that, it's very uh, important, or rather, it's like there's a huge difference between you know a type of preamp that uses that is solid state, which would be like a transistor, um, and then a, and then something like a tube, right? Which is going to be a lot um, smoother. And so transistors tends to be a little punchier and more forward, and tubes are going to be like allowed to relax a little bit. And so I want this sound to relax more. So like understanding how to use preamps also kind of allows you to get things to sit in the mix better without needing to EQ or compress. Uh, anyway, so this is a little bit stabby and harsh for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll back the attack on the release. I mean on the um, amplitude envelope. So that's just a little warmer now. Now, if you really want to start having fun, you take one of these sounds and you put it out wide. So I'm going to do that very, very simply with the Haas effect. I'll just do it on the uh, Profit. Why not? And so what I'm going to do is, right, dry wet to 100%. I'm going to turn the feedback all the way to zero. And I'm going to turn these on a time mode. And I'm just going to take one side and just delay it like a little bit. Nine, nine milliseconds should be enough. So now... Right? Versus. So it's out wide. And so now listen to how this affects the perception of the rhythm. Might sound cooler on the Moog. Let's actually try that. Nah, it doesn't. So it sounds cooler on the Prophet. And to be honest, I don't like what the Haas effect is doing. It's like really aggressive on this because it's mono. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to actually pull on the micro shift, which will also allow me to have it kind of like move a little bit. I'm going to turn my delay to tight so that there's no, so that, soups, so that the rhythm doesn't get thrown off. 
and I'm going to try to keep my detune a little bit down. Let's see what this sounds like now. So there is a teeny little bit of delay now on that profit, right? So what I might do is I might come into here and I actually would manually shift all the information over just like a teeny little bit. Still seems like a little tad late. So what I'm going to do is now is I'm going to mute this profit layer just to see what these two layers of the mini log and the Moog sound like together. Ooh. I like the profit layer, but I think it could be just a little bit stronger. I'm going to try to make the attack a little bit just sharper. So what I'm probably going to end up doing with that is really just turn up the envelope depth a little bit and try to wriggle with the cutoff and the uh, resonance just until I get it to sit at a point where it's just a little bit stabbier. And I'm going to do this in the context of the other two because that's what I'm trying to do is to make it all work together. I take the kick out now. I'm hearing that the the Moog is lasting a little bit long. Yeah, definitely. You can totally do that. Uh, TW, TWD. You can 100%, you know, like start grouping group it together and treat it as one baseline that's actually what i would do right the next thing i would do would be probably do a little bit of glue compression just to make it really all function together um so i'm just gonna turn on the release time real quick on the moog because it kind of makes a little bit of like a drag in the rhythm Sounds nice now. Let's hear it with the kick. Now, what I'm going to do is, is for in terms of like practical recording and like making this function in a track, I'm going to record eight bars of it purely static. Right? And I'm thinking, yeah, so let's try that. First, I'm just going to record eight bars of this totally static. So I'm just going to hit record. Okay, so now what I have is I have eight bars of just like the static no frills s signal which i like All right sorry i just had some weird disconnection from obs so don't fret it seems like we're back in business i was like waiting to see if the stream comes through with it jeez
All right, so yeah, if you guys could just drop real quick into the chat, if you can hear me and tell me if this is still working, because on my monitoring, it's telling me that I'm still frozen. So please let me know. Let's see. Okay, yes, I'm working. Okay, that's good. So, thank you, Todd. So, all right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this mini log one, right? And I'm going to make, because I already recorded it, so I'm in business. I have what I need. Um, what I want to do now, though, is I'm thinking I want to have a version of the mini log where it's less open. Now, of course, I could just use the auto filter you know, in, in Ableton to do that. But I really prefer to do actual filtering on the synth itself because it's going to give you a more natural, transparent result. So it, ne it also like I'm a, a I'm obsessed with like imperfections. So it never hurts to just record another eight bars of these guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna have the more slightly muted version. So now I got this muted version. I'm just going to name this. Um, right, I'm going to say, we'll call this closed, except I can't spell. So closed, we'll call this open. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get alternate versions of the Prophet and the Moog also a little opened up a bit more. So I'll come over here. All right, and you have to remember when you're recording with. Um, when you're recording with, you know, external pieces of gear, um, yeah, the comping feature, dude, oh my God, the comping feature, I can't wait for that in Ableton. Cause now what I'm going to be able to do is, uh, is, is going to be able to record all these different versions all in the same track and then just go through there and find exactly what I want. So that's going to be so nice. And I use Logic and I love the comping feature. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a more like aggressive version of all three of these, right? So right now I have this one. And so I want to get one version where all three of the synths are like going to be way more like open and crazy. Cut off wise, that's all. So I'll start with the mini locks that's here to my left. I was gonna compare it to this one. So I have to really apologize. I'm not really sure what's going on, um, but it seems like my OBS bugged out again. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to start, I'm going to record this back in, these new open versions. So I now have these versions here. So I now have these alternate versions. 
the, of, of these three takes. So now I can start kind of like, you know, I have enough to build a track out of this. I have these. And then this. And now I'm going to do one kind of crazy pass, okay? Where what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to play with the filter envelope individually on each of them. So first I'll record the... Uh, I'm going to purposely mess around with the filter on the mini log. And I'm going to record that individually. And then I'm going to mess around with the filter on the other two and I'm record each of those individually. So let me see. And to make my life a little easier, I'm going to watch the MIDI so I can remember exactly where to make these adjustments. Let's try this now. No, excuse me. I'm going to do it with everything else in there as well. So here we go. So that one may or may not have worked out well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go mess with the filter on the other one now too. So first now I'm going to record the profit. All right, I'm going to put on the <laughs> I was going to put on the count in so that I actually have enough time to get there. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the Moog. All right. So that's just um, that's just kind of like a chaos pass, which I like to do, just to kind of like see if I can get anything weird and cool to happen. So now I can hear. Right, so now I have some like madness that I can do. So we'll call this one right open. Oops. Open two, I'll call it. Because the first one's open. Call all these open. Open. And then we'll just call this random. Right? So it's really fun to do the random one because uh, you just never really know what you're going to get. So you could plan it out and try to, you know, practice it all. But I kind of like the chaos of it. Like I'm a big believer in having certain amounts of chaos in your stuff. So now, right, what I could do is I can start trying to actually arrange this or something if I wanted to, right? So let me, I have my source kind of code here, right? And now I'm going to do just to tack, let go of the CPU on my computer. I'm going to delete the MIDI instruments from the external instruments from each of these tracks. And I'm just going to label this mini log MIDI. 
Or actually, I'll go MIDI, mini, bass. I know it's mini log, bass. And I'll go MIDI, prof, bass. And then I'll go, oh, no, that was the Moog, because I'm already labeling it wrong. MIDI, Moog, bass. And then I'll go MIDI, and I'm going to name this prof, bass. And so now I have this stuff if I need it. I'm going to close them because I don't want to inter I don't want to work with them right now. I'm going to move them all to the bottom of the project. And now I can just start messing around with arranging some of this stuff. So let me what I want to do is start with the closed ones. So let's see. All right, I'll just call this my like source MIDI. So yeah, source MIDI base. Right, and the reason I'm doing this is just in case I decide that I want to add more, you know, variations. Uh, and so I'm also going to delete the MIDI instrument from here. Beautiful. Now I'll drag this all the way down. And so now I can just focus on my project or what I currently have in it. So here's my kick. As it turns out, I actually like that kick. So quick note on like mixing these, if you, you know, want to. Let's say I'm gonna put this maybe over here. And like we could build towards that moment. I have no intention of how this is actually gonna work out arrangement wise. But uh, a good thing to do right now is I'm gonna group these. And I'll just say, um, you know, I'll just go base, baseline. And now I'll take a Compressor. I'm gonna do the one from Tokyo Dawn Labs. The TR. This is actually free. You can get this one. TDR Katelnikov bass. Now the reason I'm gonna use this one is it's super sterile. It's like very very clean, very transparent. Doesn't have any of that like you know analog modeled mojo. I'm already using an analog synth coming in through analog preamps. Like it has plenty of color and mojo. I don't need to try to create more of that digitally. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna use the attack. I'll show you the way this compressor is set up. So you have, it's actually a mastering compressor, but it works really well in groups too. So I'm going to have my ratio set to two, which is pretty low. And then I'm, I'm going to set my attack to about, I would say, yeah, I'm going to try about 35. We'll see how that works out. Um, Cause I'm, I'm really only going to try to actually grab the peaks. Uh, I don't actually want to compress any of the RMS of this. Not yet at least. Um, so then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take the, re the peak release and I'm going to turn it to very fast. 50 milliseconds should be fine. Then I'll take the, the RMS release and I'll leave it where it is. Right? So the difference is, is that this is really cool that it separates release peak and RMS peak. So basically what this means is, right, is that when the compressor catches your peaks, you can make it jump away real quick. And then when it catches your overall stuff, you can make it uh, compress longer so that it just evens out more. So then I'm just going to drag the threshold down and I'm really just going to go for like a decibel of gain reduction. So that attack needs to be a little slower. That sounds really fucking juicy. I like that. What I 
also love about this compressor is that you can put it on delta mode, which is going to show you what it's compressing. So all that it's really doing is quickly controlling and grabbing the top layers, just the very top, top peaks and transients, just to make sure that they all sit a little more evenly together and it gets ju and it like juices it up nice. That's pretty nice. And now what I might do is take the same compressor, drag it on again, and set it a little differently. So this time I'm going to use a much, much slower attack. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set both the release times pretty long. And the point of this is to now actually eat into the RMS just a little teeny bit. And I'm going to put the ratio down to one and a half. So that's really a mastering ratio. And I'm going to try to get just about past one decibel gain reduction. So this is just going to be to even out, really even out, and, and, and just kind of increase the overall level. So this just brings out the detail and motion between them just a teeny little bit. So as you can see, I'm just not, I'm not doing a particular lot of compression. Again, if we put on the delta, you'll hear what I'm compressing. So it's just making it a little less confusing on the ear and gelling it a little bit together, together a little bit more. And maybe one thing I could do would be to take like an EQ and just give it like some really nice wide band, e a kind of a wide band application. Drag on this SSL one, which actually is pretty transparent. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to like, let's, I'm just gonna listen and see what happens.
sounds good. Um, what I'm thinking is maybe I'll actually take the EQ and slide it before that second compressor. <laughs> I like it after. It sounds a little more open. Um, so, yeah, what I was doing on this EQ was like, one thing I like to do sometimes is for bass is like, you know, you can pull out a little bit where it might get boxy and then boost just a little teeny bit right to the right of that. So you kind of create this, t it actually tightens it. Uh, and then, you know, just increasing uh, around 8K, which gives kind of the transience a little bit more presence. And then same thing with like 1.4, just bring some of that kind of mid-range color out, get it, get, in, get all like the nice little details of the interchange between them. So if you listen over here. It gets a little bit harsh when we go there. I don't feel like probably automating this. So I'll just juggle, cut the difference. Actually, what am I saying? Of course I would automate that. I don't want to teach you guys bad habits. So let's see. Yeah, I'll just leave it where it was. Okay, cool. Anyway, so what I could now do is kind of make the bass line even more intricate and interesting uh, by adding another, not another layer of bass, but another kind of subsidiary tone to dance in there with it. So I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to take my Profit Rev 2 and make a synth, kind of synth stab that is going to overlap with one of the bass moments in the rhythm. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to come over here onto my Rev 2. Not plugged in again. Fuck. was I playing? I don't even remember. So I'm in B minor. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a B minor synth stab.
That's not super distorted. It's super distorted and grainy because it's overdriving the preamp, which I don't want in this case. I don't know, man, but it sounds like you got to control your cat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll go with Synth Sav. I'll record this into here real quick. Everything's a little loud right now. Things are clipping, so I'm just going to turn it down a bit. I'm just going to design this synth stab a little. I want to make it a little bit stabbier. There's a couple of really cool digital effects that are built into the uh, Rev2. Um, so I, what I did was I took a little bit of a slap back delay and just blunt that in just a little bit. And I turned on the pan spread, which basically is every single time that a voice is played, it pans it around in the stereo field.
So I like that little thing where I play around with the delay time just a little bit. So it goes boom, boom, bruh. So I'm going to do that. Record that in. So that sound was just me playing around with the uh, playing around with the uh, the feedback, which honestly didn't end up being as cool as I hoped it would. So what I would just do is replace this one right here, which got shortened. That's too short, right? So I like, I liked it when it was longer. Like that. So I'll just replace it. Cool, so I can delete this one now. And so now, yeah, so what I'm doing is, right, is I'm just emphasizing a certain spot on the bass line and overlapping it. So that's kind of uh, the long and short of it. Um, that's how you can use multiple bass lines, or rather multiple synthesizers, to create a more interesting and dynamic bass line. Um, again, I am Louis Beck. This was 343 Labs TV, and more specifically, uh, Hybrid Home Studio on 343 Labs TV. Um, just again, to summarize what we did, right, is basically sometimes it's a really cool idea to uh, voice your bass line across multiple synths. You don't only have to do this with like hardware synths. You also can do this in the box and it works really great, you know? Um, it's definitely gonna work better, you know, with like some third party synthesizers that you can, you know, kind of have a little bit of different like tonal properties between, but you could definitely still do it in Ableton or in Logic for that matter, you know, just using like the, uh, you know, operator wavetable and analog which all have slightly different you know behavioral patterns um so you know uh well thank you for everyone that you know tuned in um people who were returning i really 
appreciate we really appreciate you guys you know tuning in you really you know form like the core basis of our community online and um for those of you that were new i hope that you dug the content and if you did please 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 hit the subscribe button on our channel we got tons of great content from a lot of very talented people and we have a really cool new series coming up soon uh, that you should definitely keep your ear to the ground for with some very cool producers um, so tune in on Friday if you want to, uh, you know, enter the sweepstakes to get a $200 Ableton voucher. And, uh, that's going to be all for today. I'll be back next week and, uh, be easy.